Welcome to Mental Millennials with your host, Shelby Friesen. Okay, I'm back with Tyler. We're on our second Friday of this bike riding podcast um, attempt. And last week we weren't actually sure if the audio was going to work because the bikes are actually quite loud in the mics. But we figured out the editing and could pull the sound out. So it's actually just the audio and it sounds really good. So we're going to keep doing it. And this week we decided we were going to pick a topic. And I have these like little deck of cards, as you can see here. It's from Best Self Co. And this one's called the Edison Deck. So it's a tool for everyday ideas. And there's an entrepreneur section. So Shelby's going to surprise me with some, some cards. <laughs> did, you, did you pick cards yesterday? Or See, It's hard because you're talking know, to me I again. I look at you I talk. So you can act, I, I don't know. I think it's better if you take the mic a little bit that way. So like when you're talking, you can still like look a bit. All right. Well, I don't know. We're going to configure the production a little bit. Bear with us. It's worse because you can't see through the yeah, camera. Yeah, I can kind of look at you a little bit like now. I know. You want to like meet in the middle a bit. We'll see. But basically, yeah, so these cards just have like little prompts on them. And I got to choose one and Tyler didn't want to know. I like surprises. <laughs> so the one that I chose for today, the topic is businesses you could start for under $100. Ooh, that's a good one. And I chose it because I've had a lot of people actually reaching out lately who are talking about like, you know, they want to do something more meaningful and they are tired of their job, but they don't know what to do or where to start or how to start a business. So I thought this was a pretty cool one to also just touch on that, like how simple it can be to start and get going. And even for me to kind of just simplify down, like a lot of times now when I think about <laughs> starting a business it's like this whole thing of like how are you going to make 50 or hundred thousand dollars a month and you're like trying to see the whole thing instead of just starting somewhere um it doesn't have to be crazy so yeah yeah no it's a good card too because like most people think of starting a business and they just start incurring a bunch of expenses in their head they're like i need this i need that i need to buy this i'm gonna buy that and then they're like crap i can't start this business i need 10 grand it's like, no, really, there's a lot of businesses you can start for free. So. Yeah, there's definitely a lot. Um, one of the ideas that I had recently for a friend that reached out, he's been kind of running and not drinking and doing all these things. And he saw that I had done a few challenges. And the challenges that I've been running are through email, so like you have to pay for the software, that's a hundred bucks a month and all this other shit. And people were, um, you know, had a website that people were buying through, but you, you don't even have to have that. <laughs> like when I really simplified it down, I was like, man, if you want to start helping people or like run, say you want to run a seven day running challenge and you want to get people in there and give them some motivation and tips each day and, you know, hold them accountable and, you could literally start a Facebook group yeah, and post about it on Instagram because that's in reality where you're going to get your first people. So tell your friends, Instagram, reach out. Say you're doing a Facebook group. It's going to be 10 bucks for the challenge and you, they get access to the group. And to pay you, they can literally e-transfer you. Yeah. And then you can just run in the group. And each day you post and do whatever and you utilize the group as like, your email or platform and then you can just keep going from there and try different things like you really don't need a website or anything else like I feel like depending yeah. what you're wanting to do that's just more of like um, kind of an info product helping people you know challenge thing that's if you're like sharing information but I don't know if, pardon that's a good one yeah, I thought it was just like a super simple way to start. And like, even for me, I'm like, fuck, why do I always make it so hard? Why don't I just yeah. post and make a, a group? And that's like, it saves you the time. Because then it's like, okay, I'm going to set up all this shit on email and website. And like, what if nobody buys it? At least if I just say, hey, here's a group, send me money. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's super easy. <laughs> hey, here's a group, send me money. <laughs> uh, there's some work involved. You got to make, the, you gotta make the, the actual 
plans and, and packages and all that and, you know, prepare all the material. So there's work involved. Yeah, but it is simple just to like, I feel like what you're saying is the marketing and distribution of it, like the mm-hmm. getting it out there is quite simple. Yeah. But you do have to prepare the product and the plan. I think that's where most people kind of will kind of fall off. But well, I think that they get overwhelmed it. by the plan. Yeah. Where they go, shit, how am I going to get all this stuff set up? And everybody initially thinks you need all these things. I think that can like set them back. Yeah. Whereas what you said, starting small is probably good. Like just doing, you know, whatever it is. Uh, maybe it's like a sober challenge where you're just kind of sending them emails, tips, guides, things on how to keep sober throughout the month. That's one little product that you could uh, quite easily get done. Setting up the systems might take a little bit if you're going to use like an email software or something. But mm-hmm. there's lots of videos on that. So you could just learn that pretty quick. But that's that's what came to my mind too is some sort of like guide or coaching type thing. Like, because mm-hmm. that's what you're doing. It's like a coaching product essentially. Like, that's what you're saying. Yeah, you're kind of sharing like lifestyle tips and I don't know. I guess it can, that can be a hard thing to start, too, if you feel like you have nothing. Well, something to, more relatable for that, like, might be, like, because I do feel like a lot of people have skill in, like, things like fitness. Like, I feel, I always talk to my brother. I'm like, dude, you could be, like, a personal trainer for people at your school. Like, you could, like, oh, because he plays rugby and stuff, and he, he works out. He knows how to work out. He's pretty pretty fit for his age. Like, there's a lot of kids, like, I remember in school, if I just had a friend that I could leverage, I actually did this with one of my friends in high school, he was really active and fit, and I just kind of asked him, like, hey, like, can you show me how to work out some plans, you know, like, show me how to work out, essentially, let me, can I work out with you? Mm -hmm. So, like, something like that would be pretty easy to start, just putting together your plans of, like, how to work out, how to eat. How to have a routine, like a healthy routine. Mm-hmm. That'd probably be a pretty easy way to start that as well. Yeah, I think like people who do that stuff, like before and afters and the and the fitness stuff. I also think the only pro, like not problem, but people want to like they want to see you doing it or see something you've done. So if you're gonna like help them do something, they want to know that you've done it. Yeah. So that can be where it's hard. Like, and I know a lot of people also want to start like service-based yeah. businesses, right? Where they're like, oh, I want to do a shop or a, or a landscaping company or whatever it is. And with both of, Jamie and I started that, we had that, well, he started it years before, but then we kind of resurrected it. Uh, the Joe Dirt Landscaping. Yeah. It was a landscaping company, but we literally had nothing and when people talk to me about starting a land saving company or a construction business or whatever it is they think that they need to buy all the tools and have all the stuff right away and the way that we did it was that we actually got the jobs before we bought the tools to do the job yeah because why would you buy the tools yeah if you don't have the job yeah because there's so many different ones we would go and like in landscaping like you could literally be shoveling dog shit one day <laughs> you know what i mean and the next day you could just be cutting a lawn or like trimming hedges so at first we just had like shovels and shit and would sometimes like plant new stuff and then uh we landed a hedge trimming job one day And when we act like you wait till you have the job secured and it's signed, you go, okay, well now we have to trim these hedges so we should go buy a hedge trimmer. Yeah. And you just make sure that the job pays for the tool. Um, And then your uh, like tool assets start to build up as you go. So like, I think people are nervous that to go out, they don't want to go and get a job if they don't feel like they're ready for it. But just like, get the job first yeah you gotta believe in yourself like once once you get that job like you gotta be able to land that job thinking like whatever it is i'll be able to do this and if it's not the right job just say no i can't do that and then try to land the the perfect job for you right yeah and that's the thing too is like you always have the power to say no yeah there's definitely a lot of like 
weird shit we did or stuff we fucked up too. Like I had no idea how to trim hedges. We just <laughs> figured like, fuck it. We're going to figure it out. Um, and same thing with like, I started the automotive stuff. We started as just a general repair company and that's because that's all we had. Yeah. Like I literally had shitty ass wrenches in the shop. So we do basic ass shit on cars, do brakes, like stuff that requires three tools. And then as people started coming for bigger jobs and we started to need to buy special tools and certain things, we just acquired those as the jobs paid for them. So starting as simply as you can and then getting jobs that can allow you to pay for the tools themselves or whatever it might be. Yeah, and I don't know, like, I don't know much about the industry and stuff, but I think there's also, like, there's rental, like, where you can just rent tools, can't you? Like, Yeah, you definitely, if you're tools. doing, like, I would say in landscaping and, yeah. and, like, contract work, you do rent a lot of stuff, so you're just, you can just charge that rental out to the comp, like, to the uh, client. Yeah, exactly. And even people do that in, uh, like, videography and stuff, if you're taking photos, like, I've had photographers who rent um, like the camera stabilizers and drones and all sorts of shit. And they just charge me the fee when they come and film. They don't all, you just kind of have to weigh that out for yourself. Yeah. And you know, like if the job doesn't pay for you to buy it yourself, then yeah, you can just pay to like rent it for the day. And I think that's good too. So. Yeah. No, I guess the, I guess the, the, the theme here is like, if you are trying to start a business for less than a hundred dollars, you probably want to leverage either your knowledge that you already have or some time that you already have available, mm -hmm. some skill really, and uh, and work that up. Because like, you're basically not going to have a chance creating like a product or building like an app or a software for a hundred bucks unless you just don't pay yourself <laughs> and you just like work on it, right? Yeah, because well, even in grade 10, Jamie and I convinced our dad to let us use his credit card for the first time and buy shit from China. And we bought a bunch of like Blackberry cases and like we would change the keyboards and shit. Yeah. But we, the, fir the first order was $200. Yeah. So like that already goes over the $100 limit of this card and we never made any money trying to sell it back and repair phones. That was probably the worst. I don't know. It wasn't that bad. It lasted a while, but I think... It just goes to show, like, we tried to start, like, a super cheap-ass phone company, and that cost more than $200, but starting a landscaping company or, like, automotive thing is basically free. Yeah. That's the nice part with the service-based business. It's low barrier of entry, but you know, ideally, like, they're harder to scale, so, you know, doing it, doing it for under $100, making your first $100 will be easy. But if you try to take that and make like a million dollars a year, <laughs> then you're going to struggle and you're going to need to hire. You're going to need to develop some new skills, running a business, hiring, all that sort of shit. So it's harder to scale, but easier to start. Whereas on the product side, harder to start, but easier to scale. So it's, I don't know, it's kind of a balance. Like I think most people probably do end up starting with like a smaller service based or like based on some knowledge they already have, they probably start with that. And then once they acquire some funds and resources, then they can go think more like, all right, let's add on a product to this. Let's put some R and D time and spend some money, like actually building this out a bit more. So just like start small, start simple. Yeah. Cause I think there's like a fine line, not a fine line, but when you start a service based business, you make money right away. Yeah. You can pay yourself. If you start a product business, you can't usually no. <laughs> unless you have a lot of money to invest right away or you're sitting on cash you're kind of waiting and it's like product business are usually more like long term you get money um in an automated sense kind of shit uh later on but the beginning it's tough whereas service based at least you know if you go out you're getting paid and you can keep going so i think that's why a lot of people start with service based like that's why i think it's a good place to start because you can just get paid for your time you know you're going to get paid and then and you're it like, gives you a good yeah. chance to learn those skills yeah that's what i was thinking like, like you're retaining more than just money on that 
Yeah, like you learn the, the basic business skills and the ways to run a company and you're learning all these things. And then you can take that service business and everything you've learned and you already be making money and then you can productize through what you've learned. Yeah. But I think that's the transition most people don't make the is they get thing. stuck in a service business. And then because it gets to a point where you learn enough and you'll go, fuck, like, I'm tired of trading my time for money. Yeah. And then you want more, but the only way to do that then is to productize. Uh, not the only way, but that's kind of like the nice way. I mean, you can sell really expensive, you know, work or, you know, you can charge an, a crazy hourly rate, but still it's limiting because it's still an hour of your time. Whereas like if you have a product, you can sell mm -hmm. unlimited as the amount of people in the world. Yeah, and like even in my case, like when I like I have a service business and we're working hard to productize it, but it's been the hardest challenge really of the whole business is productizing that out and making it so it doesn't take all my time or all my partner's time. So like one of the easiest things, like we just started doing like digital marketing website stuff and that's just like straight up a service. But you should at, talk uh, yeah. about starting it like... Like, yeah, well, like when you built your first like websites and stuff and how it kind of expanded into yeah. something more like, I don't know, was there a reason you like you obviously started it because I know, did you start it because it was cheap? No, just, I never considered any of that aspect. I was just thinking about it now. I was like, I don't think I paid a dollar to start my business. Yeah. It was just really like, I already had a computer. So I guess that's kind of cheating, but you know, at, maybe, at this point you probably can get a computer for a hundred bucks. If, <laughs> yeah. you, if you don't have a computer. I don't know how you're going you to You can go to a this. fucking library and use yeah, one. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, you need a computer. But for me, like the story was I was just getting a haircut and I was just like, man, like I've been kind of learning. Like I was like 14. I'm like, I'm just going to be learning about website stuff. Do you have a website? And he's like, no, I don't really have a website. Like my hair salon, I don't really need one. And I was like, fine, you don't really need one, but I'll just kind of make you one for free anyways. Like I'm just trying to, I'm just learning like I'm just playing around with this in my free time like can I just make you a website so I just next time I was getting my haircut I was like hey dude I pulled out my laptop and I'm like I made you a quick little website and he's like damn this is actually pretty cool and he gave me a couple free haircuts so, <laughs> so I just yeah started, that's sick yeah yeah <laughs> so like that was it was not even I didn't make any money I didn't spend any money I guess I got a couple free haircuts but then after that I was just, I, I did gain one thing and it was the knowledge of how to do that. So mm -hmm. I, I get, I got a little bit of free kind of education there and just kept rolling off that. And like that stuff, like the, the momentum's kept rolling, like even till this day, like we're busier than ever. So mm -hmm. I don't know. It didn't take any money to start and it was service-based and we're working really hard to productize it. Like, like even in that, like even in a service-based business, there's many things you can still productize. Mm -hmm. So like for us, like, like we, we manage email services, which is like a product. Like we're selling uh, products that Microsoft has made and we're just selling that, reselling it. We're leveraging other things like, like website hosting. The, there's little, little things you can productize on the side of your service-based business. They'll grow your revenue and it'll let you kind of change you know, change over from that service side to the product size, product side and grow your business. I think that's another good point too, is that you don't actually have to create your own product. Yeah. Um, if you are like start a small service based company, like, I don't know, I'm trying to think of some other ones aside from just the shit that I've done. But I mean, every service based business has products. Exactly. You're not just standing there in the middle of nowhere with nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so like you have to do, you have to use materials, you have to use tools, you have to wear the proper clothes and gear. So you can actually create and sell those things, not create, but you can actually just sell other people's shit. So if you're using stuff and you're at a job or whatever, you can sell it to others or refer it and make money off of that. I mean, kind of like in the automotive industry, if you're working on someone's car and you buy a part from Lordco or any of the parts place, you're making money on every time you sell that. Yeah. So it's not just on 
your time, um, that's uh, kicking into it as well. Well, that's kind of a thing. Like, it's not really black and white, right? Like, it might start off as a as a service base, but every business is going to have products and services. Like, mm-hmm. if, even if you have a product based business, solely product based, you're still going to need to do some setup and like onboarding for that customer usually. Mm-hmm. So that's still service. Mm-hmm. So it's never black and white, but I think starting with service is probably the best. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think it's really like the only thing you can start for a hundred bucks. Yeah. I mean, I don't know though. Like you could also go like, I know people who just buy and sell stuff where say you like on a hundred bucks, maybe you'll buy a pair of like, I don't know, retro Nikes or some shit that people like, and you get a good deal on them for 50 bucks and then you go resell them for 200. Yeah. Well, the hot thing right now is Pokemon cards. So is are they back? Yeah, they're back, man. They're like, (laughs) People are spending like quarter million dollars flipping Pokemon cards and stuff right now. So it's like you could definitely get a couple cards on eBay for like 50 bucks, play the market a little bit and uh, see how that goes. It's a whole nother business. <laughs> well, I think what's good about that stuff too is starting well, like that's like kind of idea of buying one thing and selling it. It's like you got to start small, like you got to start somewhere. And I think even for me, I still get caught up in like how the hell am I going to sell a million of these things or whatever it is just focus on selling one like if you've never sold something before don't go to China and buy 2,000 fucking chairs or whatever the hell it is you want to buy sell or mirrors or like you know cheap pairs of sunglasses buy one somewhere else and see if you can sell them and actually now this just made me think of the real thing. Yes. Starting a product-based business, you can actually sell products you don't have. Yeah, just drop ship them. And that's well, not even that. Like no. you don't even have to drop ship. Like I know a lot of people who test products. You can go on Alibaba or any of these Chinese websites, take the photos, put them anywhere. Like yeah. you could literally make a Facebook Marketplace ad and go, "Hey, I'm selling these. Here's the price." See if people reply. Yeah. If you get 50 replies and people want to buy the glasses or mirrors or whatever they are, then order them. Yeah, and validate s- your idea before you before you purchase it all, right? Yeah, or pre-sales. Like I had yeah. a guy, I had a guy who was welding for us and he was actually doing that with these like LED mirrors, right. but he wasn't pre-selling. He just was buying the stuff and I'm like, man, why don't you just go around? Like you can, you, I think the key is like getting your initial order paid for by pre-order. So even if it's small, say you have like, I don't know, let's just use sunglasses. Say you want to order on sunglasses from Alibaba. There's 10 pairs. They're a buck each. So that's 10 bucks. You're going to sell them here for say 10 bucks each. So you're going to make 10 times what you spent. But before you order them, make sure you sell one pair and get the money. So like go to your friend and say, hey, I'm ordering these glasses. Yeah. I'm going to sell them for 10 bucks. Even tell them, you know, give me a deal. Say, I'm, I'll give you a pre-sale, half price. You get two for 10. Send me 10 bucks. Now you have the 10 bucks. You can go order all the glasses. And then everything you sell after that is profit. Yeah. No, that's a perfect idea right there. I think it's a good way to like, because, yeah, like a lot of people we know will like do that with like their big companies. They'll test like, a new bag or a new like set of earrings or something on their website and they'll do a big uh, launch and they'll go, okay, like, well, we only sold like 2000 of these and we're selling 10,000 the other. So they'll just refund the entire order and they never even ordered the product. Yeah. They just refund everybody and go, yeah, okay. It didn't really work that well. Um, so you can really play with it that way. I think that's a pretty cool. That's a good way to look at it too. Yeah. It just starts with like believing in yourself really like being in your ability to sell shit or like just put it all together. Like mm-hmm. you just got to like believe like, Hey, I could actually, the risk of attempting this is quite low and I think I could do it. That's pretty much all you need to start a business. Yeah. It's just like, honestly, any of the ways you do it, like service, the product, the bullshitting that you have no product and selling it before you order it. Like you all, every one of those, you're just you're at the end of the day you're selling yeah so every time you do that you're just learning each time you're getting more comfortable with it um 
yeah, it's definitely like, I don't know, you learn so much from every single sale, honestly. Like, I feel like every single customer I've ever had or whatever, I've just learned, you learn something, honestly, every time someone buys something. Absolutely. I made a website. We're, we're making websites right now for a company, and I've literally just learned something that I've never known over the four or five years, probably more now of doing it. And I just learned something today. So it's like yesterday, not today. I just woke <laughs> you up. You learned shit today, bro? Uh, I learned stuff today from you. <laughs> it's a good topic. We've been speaking on this for 30 minutes, though. Do you want to do a new card? I don't know. Are you are you over it? You got nothing else for that? I, I was just going to answer it pretty good. What do you got? I don't know. I'm just trying to think of any other ideas or specific things, mm. but I don't know. I think we covered like. We're like, I think a big one is like leveraging like things that are skills in your family is good too. Like mm -hmm. if your family is already doing, like say someone in your family has a business, kind of leveraging off that and maybe it's not starting a business right away, but getting some of the skills from that kind of working alongside them for a little bit and then starting your business could be a good catalyst as well. It's yeah. Like thing. I kind of consider freelancing a business Yeah. too. Like essentially you're kind of like freelancing for them or maybe you're like creating a product for someone else to add onto their business or something. But um, yeah. like even like, yeah, that's a good idea too. Like say your grandpa owns a landscaping business, but he doesn't do power washing. Say, Hey dude, Let's let's open up the power washing division. Oh like, yeah, hundred you know I mean? percent. Or like the snow removal in the in the winter time, just kind of leveraging onto something that already exists. Mm -hmm. You have that asset there in the family. Try to grow that out. Yeah, hundred percent. And they'll probably be inclined to help you out as well. So it's another one. I was even thinking to do just one card each time. So like, sure. Because I feel like we'd be another thirty minutes on another card. Okay. That was my thought. That sounds good. <laughs> I like the card though. It's a good card. Yeah. No, there's some good shit yeah. in there. And yeah, like you can literally just get these things online. I got three different ones. This one's for ideas. There's one for like better conversations. Um, it's called icebreakers. Honestly, like would be pretty good to look through like before you're going to go on a date or some shit. There's yeah. like some, keep some, keep some in your pocket. <laughs> and then there's one, um, it's called courage, but it's just for getting out of your comfort zone. So there's like a bunch of weird ideas in there for things that you can do. And you kind of just pick one and it'll prompt you to do something that day that's out of your comfort zone. So they're cool. It just like promotes things you don't normally think about. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, well then that's it. We're calling it a day. Businesses for under 100 bucks. Go start one. Woohoo. <laughs>